in fact, again, tell people that I don't have good days and bad days. I have good days and better days because truly I try to find something every day to be excited about. As a young mother, I experienced a paradigm shift that transformed how I saw education and ultimately the world around me. I started this podcast, The Luminous Mind, to connect with and learn from people who are disrupting the status quo in how they learn, educate, and live in the world around them. Prepare for a paradigm shift. Light a candle. Light your world. Benjamin Franklin said, instead of cursing the darkness, light a candle. You're listening to The Luminous Mind with your host, Rebecca Bowman. Today's fire starter is Matt Pond. 12 years ago, Matt was diagnosed with brain cancer at the age of 35. He had less than a 1% chance of survival. In the next four years, he went through radiation and four types of chemotherapy and three surgeries. He lost his ability to read, write, and the surgery that saved his life left him paralyzed on his entire right side. Matt is moving forward with great optimism, has learned to read and write again, and he even finished his college degree. He had played the guitar for nearly 20 years and has learned to play it one-handed. Matt's motto is, I don't have bad days anymore. I have good days, and then I have better days. Welcome, Matt. Oh, thank you. Great to be here. (laughs) I'm really anxious to hear more about your story and how you choose to be optimistic. But before we do all of that, can you please tell our audience a little bit more about yourself? Okay, so uh, I actually grew up in Yukon, Idaho, (laughs) just just down the road from Rexburg my whole life. Um, And and it was a a wonderful uh, growing up. I had, uh, let me let me hear, 13 siblings. Wow. In, in my family. <laughs> I, in fact, I am lucky 13 out of 14 kids. Wow. That's and, awesome. And uh, it, it is <laughs> my sweet mom and dad. And so um, we really had an amazing life. We would, we would sing together all the time. Uh, we still just love one another. And, and, um, and oh, they've, they helped me tremendously through, through my battles in life. And, and uh, so it's, yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful thing. They uh, are amazing. My family is. That's great. And you're married and have kids of your own too. I I am indeed. I uh, I hate to my my sweet Chris Pond. Yes, and and we have uh, four boys and a girl. And my my three older boys were from a different marriage. Oh, okay. Um, cool. But uh, but Chris and I were able to. Uh, have uh, a little boy and a little girl, which is a, a, an amazing thing with with uh, what I've gone through in life. So yeah, that is awesome for sure. So, and what were you doing like before all of this happened? You know, what's your profession and maybe some hobbies and so, stuff that you do? You know what? Um, be- before this, I I was going to Boise State, finishing up my uh, bachelor's degree, and uh, I I loved basketball. I loved uh, of course, singing still all, all all over the place. I've I've loved to sing, and I I love being with my family. Oh, I love I love power tools. I love building things, <laughs> oh, and wow. uh, and and so yeah, it's it's um, th- and that's what I was doing. I I had while I was going to school, I had my own business doing wood floors. You know, just just loved loved life. That's awesome. Well, I'd love to hear, you know, in your bio, we definitely talk about, you know, the struggle that you had with cancer, um, with brain cancer. And I did tell Matt before we start recording that I had a brother-in-law who actually passed away. He had a brain tumor. So I can totally, you know, just the challenges of that he faced and stuff. It's, it's definitely deep in my heart, but I'd love to maybe hear some background, like maybe some of the background story of what led you to this life's mission and this message that you have now. Well, once I found out that I was going to live, uh, and maybe I should even go a little farther back than that. So, so I, I had cancer when I was 35 years old, like it, like it said at the bio, and I had a 1% chance of survival. And, um, and there were a lot of people that um, were thinking more about the 90 and 9 of me dying than the 1% of me living. Wow. And um, and so uh, it was it was a tough thing. Even even the doctors were were that way. 
and um, that said, I'm, I'm, I'm truly sorry. But I, uh, I, um, my brother uh, got me to the Huntsman Cancer Institute in Salt Lake City, Utah, and there they, they changed my world. With, with other doctors saying you've got a couple months to live, and this doctor, Dr. Glantz, who's not there now, but he was at the time, and, and he says, um, will you come and see me every once in a while for the next 30 years? And I just, I just, I just bawled because, because it changed, it changed me right then. I mean, it, it was life or death and he just gave me 30 more years. I, I said, can we make it 50 years? <laughs> and, and, uh, and so, but that then I'm, I'm alive. And so I thought I'm going to, I want to help others. And so. Um, now again, through that, it took away my reading, my writing, my my third surgery that saved my life took away my my right side, and uh, and so what you said about my my life mission, I guess, is to let people know that regardless of the struggles that you have, keep fighting and love every day of your life. In fact, again, tell people that I don't have good days and bad days. I have good days and better days because truly I try to find something every day to be excited about. Yeah. Well, and it does come down to hope. I mean, um, I know I've heard uh, people of faith and people that have hope have a greater chance of getting through a situation like this. You know, people that are hopeless um, end up kind of succumbing. And like you said, give every day a fight. And when I was, um, witnessing this uh, experience with my brother-in-law that's when I saw I mean he he had a lot of fight in him for decades and it was only when he finally uh, quit working and he had other challenges that happened but I just saw you know he just he just gave up hope Uh, how do you feel like that like fits into your message with this optimism and stuff like that and with hope absolutely I you you have to have hope and and there was a time where I, I didn't know if I was going to live or to die. And so, so it's like, if, if I'm supposed to die, um, you know, please watch over my boys, please um, help my family. But if I'm supposed to live, I need a, some huge help on how I'm going to live. And that was when I was, I was praying to Heavenly Father, or my higher power, or, or whatever, whoever you, you think of um, anyway. And, um, and three days later, I got the call from the huntsman that uh, I'm going to live. Oh, wow. And so after that, I, I, did, I did have a little pity party for myself <laughs> about, for, for about a half hour right after my third surgery when I found out that I could not uh, work my whole right side. And I had a pity party and, <laughs> and said, you know, why is this happening to me? Why? And then I just thought, but wait a second, I'm alive. And now I think back that my uh, third surgery is coming up on 11 years. And I'm thinking, man, in, in this 11 years, look, uh, I look back and think, look at all these things that I can do now that I couldn't do then. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm truly blessed every day. Yeah. Well, and that takes uh, optimism too, you know, to be able to come out of this and to look back and realize what you've gone through and how much you're improving for sure. I'd love to hear, I mean, we've, we've talked about a ton of challenges already, but, you know, just give us some of the challenges that maybe you had along the way. And what did you learn from those that's helped to give you strength now? Well, to trust in the Lord that, that he knows everything. And I, I'm so thankful just to be alive. And so he'll, he'll help me out. But it took time to be able to read again. It, it took a long time to, to learn that. But I was able to finish up my college degree at, at uh, BYU-Idaho, be able to, uh, to – uh, I, I had a, a job for a, a while. I, be able to, to get a job again was great. And I, the only reason why I had to – to leave that is because my uh, sweet father uh, asked that my wife and I could come to uh, take care of him and, and my mom. And so that's, that's kind of what I do now is, is I do motivational speaking and 
but my my great thing the the best thing is to just be able to take care of my sweet mom and and uh, do things there but um so to to learn to read and write to learn how to do my power tools with one hand wow. um to um <laughs> to to figure things out that way to uh to learn how to tie a tie with with one hand or or do my button or my my shirt with one hand you get creative <laughs> 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 with with things, I used to tie my tie with my teeth to to, to tie it, until people said that, that's kind of gross. <laughs> and, and so then I thought, oh, that is. And so I figured out a way to do it without using my teeth. And, <laughs> <laughs> well, and that that does. Um, we kind of talked about how you know this is definitely kind of an educational podcast about that self directed learning and kind of changing our paradigms on that. What are some ways that you feel like your paradigm changed over time and with experience? I'm sure, you know, over the last 12 years, you are a vastly different person. What does that look like? Oh, absolutely. Oh, it, it feels so good to, uh, to be able to, well, well, to, to even be able to talk like, like we're talking now, because it, uh, back when it first happened, um, I, I couldn't talk. And, and so then I just started shutting up. I was so worried uh, that I'd say something wrong, um, that that um, again my mind w- uh, wasn't working right, and so so I was I was worried about that. And now I, <laughs> I um, just just talk, and if I make a mistake, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but so so um, things like that, uh, which again you just have to keep on going and, and moving forward and, and you, you know you're going to make mistakes. This life is time to make mistakes to, to, and, and you just keep on going. And so, um, you know, to, to learn how to drive again when, when it took away my uh, right side and trying to figure out, okay, how, how am I going to do this? And, and for a little over a year, I didn't drive because I wasn't ready to to get in there. But then, but then I, I thought I, I've got to learn how to do this. And so I had to figure out ways to be able to do it. That's awesome. So now you're a motivational speaker. How are you helping other people? I mean, where's your message resonating with other people for sure? Well, there was a gentleman uh, about a year and now oh, it's coming up on two years now. And he had a stroke and he uh, loved playing the guitar, but he thought this was in 2001 that he had a stroke and he thought, I thought playing the guitar was just something of the past until he saw me play the guitar with my one hand. And it, it helped him think, well, if he can do it, let me try to figure out how I can do it. And so I hope with things like that, that to, to try a different way of things that you love to do, don't, don't stop loving life that's a huge thing is sometimes when people have uh something like that a stroke or or cancer or or something else that they they think my life's over then and and try to to let them know that no keep keep on going try it a different way i i have failed so many times with different things luckily i have um all my fingers still (laughs) <laughs> figuring things out with, again with my power tools and things like that but to learn how to try it a different way things that you love to do oh uh, yeah well and I was thinking about we were talking about how you know after that surgery uh, where you realized you didn't have any ability to move your right side your entire right side you had that tiny little pity party but how that weakness in yourself you know that thing that you thought was going to be kind of the end all ends up being a way for you to strengthen other people sometimes we don't look at the you know what we've lost as a positive you know to help other people realize that and I think I mean regardless of if you've had cancer or if you've had anything like that just the idea of trying it a different way you know not letting that failure take us down you know but letting us be able to continue to push forward. I mean, some people, they're perfectly whole and whatever, but we let so many things, these minor little things really get in our way. I I love that message as well as failing, 
you know, failing is so important to all of us. And absolutely, somehow we get in this mindset mm-hmm. that that if we fail, we're not, uh, we're less than somehow. You know what I mean? But but like you said, that's what this life is for. Correct. Be correct. Because I again, I, I know a, a lot of ways that I shouldn't be doing things, <laughs> or <laughs> or different ways uh, that don't work until I find out that, hey, this one works. And even even when I do that, I work on it for a little while, and I think I think I can even make it better. That's and awesome. And so I, I continue to think, hey, wow, this is even better than, than what I thought of before. Yeah, kind of like tying and your tie so, with your teeth, right? I mean, <laughs> you realize that. <laughs> right. That or, or, uh, or with my guitar or, or with, uh, again, uh, everything you – I, I continue to, to try to think, okay, this is a great a great start, but how can I make it even better? That's awesome. Well, I know you've done some TED Talks, and you also do some other speaking. You know, first of all, tell us about the groups that you like to go speak to and, you know, what those messages look like. And then give us maybe some points that we would hear in that message. Um, well, so, so I do... Uh, performing for uh, boy everywhere <laughs> or for every everyone and it depends on actually the the company or or the school or or the youth group or or anything that that depends on on what kind of a a show that I'd give to to people but um things like uh again to not give up regardless of of what you're going through right now because you never know um, around the corner when, when something great is going to come. So you just, you keep on going. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know if you hear it, but uh, I love to, to laugh. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and boy, I, I, I laughed before, but I, I, needed to, I, I needed to laugh about myself. <laughs> I, I look at and think, okay, that, well, this is, this is uh, what it is. And, and, but to, to have, have fun. I mean, this, this life uh, is, it's our only thing. This, this life is, is what we have. Yeah. And so to take it and, and do the, the very best you can in this life and, and try to make a, a difference uh, again for yourself, of course, but to, for others around you. As yeah. Well, well and I think your message is really timely. I mean, we see an increase in suicide and we see, yeah. uh, you know, depression. We see just struggles that are going on. We see people who, you know, uh, school shooting type of things where they've given up and they don't care who else they take down type of thing. Do you right. ever talk about that? I mean, was there ever a time in your life that you wanted to give up? And then how did you kind of come out of that? You know what? I don't know that I... I was I was trying like crazy to stay alive, <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, so so once I I found out that they can and again it, uh, the it was uh, I had cysts the, that's the what the doctor said is he says yes you have cancer but he says you have three cysts in your brain he says can we, if we can take the cysts out then we can deal with the cancer and so. I, I really don't think I've I've thought about dying. I was I was worried so much on living that that I I was like uh, um, I'll do anything uh, just to live because you were talking about was it was it a brother-in-law that, that yeah. had yeah yeah my oldest brother Ron had cancer different cancer than mine but from the time that he found it to the time that he died was two months. Wow. Uh, he was 35 years old. Uh, wait, uh, 42 years old. Wow. Uh, and I was uh, 30, or sorry, I was 22 years old at that time. And um, our family still, we don't know why he died and I, and I lived. We we don't know, but but I'm thankful every day that I can be here to raise my my family to be a part of my family. It's just, it's a blessing every day to be able to do things like that. Well, we never really talked about the age of your kids or anything. How old were they when all of this was happening? Okay. Um, my, uh, my oldest, he was, uh, 
four years old. Oh my goodness. And my, my middle was a uh, one and a half and my youngest at the time was uh, five months. Wow. When, uh, when the cancer hit. And now they're uh, almost 19, almost 14, and 12. Yeah. Wow. Wow. What, and, I mean, that's so, a reason to live just in and of itself, right? <laughs> I mean, just truly, to be able truly. to see that. Yeah. And then we, and then I have a uh, five-year-old and a two-year-old as well, and they're <laughs> they're so great. That's awesome. Well, and that's a miracle in and of itself, correct? Like uh, with all of the procedures yes. and radiation. Is it radiation that I? I'm yeah, radiation, oh, yeah. And chemotherapy. chemotherapy. Yeah, all of that is an absolute miracle. So, so I mean, just for those reasons, we know, you know, that was a reason for you to continue living for those definitely the ones that were still there that needed to come. So, well, and I love yeah. to hear, like you said in your speaking, uh, you kind of called it a performance. Like, what do you really, uh, you know, what does that entail? Well, uh, so, so um, I, I, uh, I love, again, love to sing. And so I, I, uh, I either, either, um, acapella songs or songs with my one-handed guitar <laughs> i uh, i love so i so I, I sing on things i i show people how to tie a tie i i let give people some hope that how to figure figure out your own things that you're struggling with and see what you can do with with what um what you have what what your your mind can can figure out on on how to make it happen. And so, um, yeah, I, I love, I, like I said, growing up in, in my family, I love being up on, on stage. Um, it is, it has never, uh, frightened me to, to be up. And, and so I love, um, to be able to inspire others, um, with music, with, uh, of course, laughter, but then, but then, help them uh, through their struggles as well. Yeah, like we were talking about when you know you first have a pity party that you you can't use the right side, and it really ends up being almost your greatest asset because you're able to show these uh, people these things and that you've moved past it and have found ways to continue living and to be joyful and happy and optimistic about it for sure. When we talked about how um, having people watch you play guitar and things like that has given other people hope, but what's some other feedback that maybe you've received about your message and how is it helping people be more successful? You know, um, every time uh, pe people just come after, after one of my shows and, and they're, they, they're just, so thankful because they either themselves have have something going on in their life. I mean, everybody has something everybody, going on in their yeah. life, but but along with that, they know someone or they they have to serve someone or or um, again know someone who ha are having troubles that they think, wow, I, I want to help them get to a better life to be better than, than they are. And, and I know people uh, personally that kind of given up and it breaks my heart. And I, I, to say there, there's so much more to life. Please uh, keep on, keep on fighting. And, and some that they love just kind of being in their own little shell and, and, and to not get out and, and try new things and figure out new things. And they're just like, Hey, um, I'm, I'm just going to be, be like this. And, and it's like, oh, you're, you're missing out on so much. Yeah. Might as well continue to keep striving. I mean, we're yeah. here for a reason, like we talked about in your life, all the different reasons that, that you've found to continue on and to keep going. And I'd love to hear, I'm kind of working with other people. I and mean, you said it, that everyone's got somebody that either they're helping to change themselves or mentoring other people. What do you feel like you've learned from mentoring others? You know, um, I, I don't know that, that I mentor more than, than I'm just, I, I want to be there just, just to help them or may, maybe guide them, but, but to, to be a great friend to say, 
you know, let's let's do this together. Let's see what we can help. I, I want to help them out in any way to uh, help them strive uh, and be better in their own lives. I, I, I did a little show. It, it was a literally a, sh- uh, a little one. There were only a couple people there, but one was a um, he he had a stroke and he couldn't t- he couldn't talk at all. And it, it, his wife and and so both of them together, they're like, "What did you do to to help to to get better?" And so I was able to talk with him. And in fact, it was um, some uh, therapy that I had um, hyperbaric chamber that helped me tremendously with my reading. That that we found um, while Chris and I were on our honeymoon actually in Utah, found it, and um, and that helped tremendously. And I love to share with others uh, things that I have used to help me get better so that they can hopefully uh, do some of those things or or other things to to find great things. Because in this world, there's great things happening all the time trying to help get people, especially those that that have a disability, to to get back into doing what they love to do. That's awesome. Well, and we need that network and that connection sometimes to to help you know us learn and then also give us ideas of what we can do to to continue you know moving and learning in a different way for sure that's great do you feel like there are any habits in your personal life that have been really helpful in your recovery and your success so in uh, in 2010 january 2010 i uh I set goals and, and I had no, I mean, I still had one whole year of chemo when I was, when I was writing down these goals, goals of, uh, I want to finish up my, my college degree. I want to get remarried. I want to be able to have more children. I want, and and I have, have these goals. Wow. Uh, there were, uh, like, uh, 25 of them. And, um, and now as I look back, it's like, that one's done. That one's done. That one's done. There's still a few that I, I'm still working on. But still, you know, to uh, to work on my right side, I still work like crazy on my right side. But I don't let that stop me from enjoying my life uh, where I'm at right now. Um, and so so I, yeah, I still want to get better and better, but I don't want to uh, just – stop until I do. I want to keep on going. That's awesome. Well, in goal setting, I mean, that kind of reminds me of uh, our first conversation when we were talking about hope. It does give you kind of a hope for the future and it's something to strive for. I mean, especially when you had such a low chance of survival and, you know, you were focused on the, everyone else was focused on the 99% when you were focused on that 1% and that you were going to you know, continue to move forward. And that's a great way to know that that's going to happen is when we set some goals, correct? Right. Correct. Correct. That's awesome. And now I, I, uh, I also have what they call a vision board and, uh, I, I found, uh, um, how to do that. It's a thing that I, I did, uh, about a year or two years ago now coming up on two years. Uh, and, uh, and so I have a vision board that I look at to say, Hey, I want, I want to be able to do this and I want to be able to do that. And this vision board helps as well to, to show that, that, Hey, I mean, it's a vision of what I want in trying to, to, to make it come to, to fruition. And so that's also a a wonderful thing like that is, is to set goals and, and, uh, and get a vision of what you like and, and, then, then work on that and try to reach that those goals. Well, and I've even heard stories of people who create the vision board. I mean, it's all pictures and words and stuff of what they want the future to be like, and then they have moved and whatever, and it's been stored away. And then when they pull it back out, they realize that they, you know, they've been able to accomplish everything on that, even though they haven't looked. It set that mindset for them to right. accomplish those things. Uh, is that how, I mean, have you seen things like that? Like, and I've seen other people tell me like, you know, things will just come to them because it's on their vision board. Like you right. know, they won't even yeah, actively be seeking it out necessarily. 
Correct. Yeah. Um, and, and, and things do, they, all of a sudden somebody calls and says, Hey, uh, do you need one of these? And I'm like, Oh my word. And I said, it's on my vision board. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they're like, well, well, we've got one here. Here you go. And so true. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I have that and I, I, uh, look at it and, and try to, to, um, think about, um, what can I do to, to make it happen? And then, and then people that I don't even know are, are dear friends, but they happen to, to have something that I, that I'm looking on my vision board and I'm like, wow, that's, that's amazing. That's great. Well, and with your vision board, do you ever do affirmations like those positive affirmations too, or is that? Well, yes, to, to, um, that, that I, I am a great speaker so that, so that I can help others and, and, and things like that. Absolutely. They, uh, it works tremendously to be able to do that. And, and to other people get, give it a shot. If you, if you haven't give it a shot because you can pull off amazing things with, uh, with these. And, and it's your mind, you know, teaching your mind that, Hey, I am, I'm good at this or I can, I can do this. And so it's a, a wonderful thing. Your mind is wonderful. Yeah, it's interesting how we can can create the life we want just by thinking about it, for sure. I love that. Indeed. (laughs) Well, speaking of goals, what are your long-term goals, and how do you feel like that's working into the legacy that you hope to leave? You know what? um, Long-term goals are are to raise my children up to be great moms and dads. And and hopefully as I'm doing that and as I'm, I'm going out, to, to help others to know how the importance of, of a great family, a great support. I mean, again, um, I, I, I'm here t- helping my, my sweet mom. My, my father passed away a year and a half ago. He was 90, almost 91 years oh, old, wow. and it was a, a wonderful thing. But, and so we're here with, with my sweet mom, and um, it's such a blessing after all that uh, she has done for me, uh, not only through through my cancer and things, but but throughout my whole life, to be able to be here and uh, be with her, and and uh, help her. And so, uh, for me, you know, to to have a, a, a wonderful family and and teach them great things that, that they need in life, and to also be a truly be. Uh, part of this wonderful family oh, wow. so well and that is the greatest legacy you can leave is you know the ones that you leave behind I mean sometimes we get so caught up yeah. in wanting to write the book or wanting to be this in our profession or whatever when really the thing that does continue to live on is you know the children that come after us and the family that we've created and that network for sure so that's yeah. great well and before we say goodbye do you have any final parting advice for our listeners and then give us your contact information, how maybe somebody can find you and possibly, you know, have you come speak to them. Boy. Um, yeah. Never give up regardless of, of the, the trials that you may face or, and, and boy, there are, there are people that, that have a lot harder trials than I have, but please don't give up. Um, on on life uh, because you still have uh, you're, you're still helping others even if they don't think so they are helping others um, uh, even if it's just me they're helping others and, and um, so so do that um, please don't don't give up and, and enjoy the ride have fun <laughs> uh, do what, what whatever you do uh, Figure out ways to, to, to do it in a fun way. Have, yeah, don't have bad days. Good days and better days. That's awesome. And then to uh, email me at uh, uh, mattpondsurvivor at gmail.com. It, it, if they uh, are interested in, in, a, in a show, you can see me on uh, Facebook, um, Matt Pond survivor motivational speaker on Facebook. Um, and, uh, and I do a, uh, a one week broadcast 
where I'm sitting live and, and just uh, kind of talking about different subjects. This uh, last one was, was talking about um, those that had strokes or cancer or uh, a, a bad motor vehicle, vehicle accident or something where they lose an arm or a leg or, or they don't use them anymore and, and how to thrive with that. Uh, this next uh, subject coming up on Thursday, on Thursday at, at around 6 o'clock is um, about uh, getting remarried after after something like this and and uh yeah so you can find me on facebook or or my website that's great well and so and you do the is it a facebook live is that you're talking about where you yeah yeah. okay awesome okay i'm definitely tuning into that need to hear more about that for sure so I was going to tell you, too, I've just been really impressed with how you continue to express hope to people and give that optimism. I find that's just completely inspiring. Uh, I think it's a message we can all partake in regardless of the challenge, any challenge that we have, for sure. But again, we've been chatting with Matt, with Matt Pond, who's a brain cancer survivor, an optimist, and a motivational speaker. Uh, You can find him on his Facebook page, which is Matt Pond, motivational speaker, brain cancer survivor. Uh, he's given out his Gmail account and his website is mattpondsurvivor.com. However, I'm going to be sure to link all the information that we've discussed today on our website as well. So thank you so much, Matt, for coming on and joining us and helping to light our minds on fire on this really important topic of continuing to have optimism and hope. I appreciate it. I, I tr- truly appreciate you having me come. Thank you for listening to The Luminous Mind music featured in this episode from scott holmes to learn more about our podcast check us out at theluminousmind.net